You're watching News 25, where news comes first. Good evening, I'm Brad Bird. Our top story, breaking news at this hour, a major decision by Indiana's highest court regarding a 15-year-old Evansville murder case. As we first told you about an hour ago, the Indiana Supreme Court has overturned the death sentence of convicted killer Thomas Shiro. Shelley Kirk is on our top story tonight. Well, Brad, this decision came down late this afternoon, as you just mentioned, and it's a rather surprising one, I might add. This case has been through several appeals attempts and uh, including even going before the U.S. Supreme Court. All previous attempts for appeal have been denied until today. The Indiana Supreme Court today overturned the death penalty against Thomas Shiro. The court ordered that Shiro spend 60 years in prison for the conviction, commencing from the original date of his sentencing in 1981. Now, Shiro has already spent 14 years in prison, and he could conceivably be up for parole after 30 years in prison. A Brown County judge sentenced Shiro to death for the 1981 rape and murder of Laura Jane Lubahusen of Evansville. That after a jury had recommended Shiro spend life in prison. And the judge snubbing that jury recommendation has been a big question in many of these appeals and is, in fact, the reason today's decision of overturning the death sentence. Shiro's attorney, Monica Foster of Indianapolis, calls this a victory. She says the Indiana Supreme Court reaffirmed the importance of the jury in the criminal justice, justice system. She says she also talked with Shiro's family, who are thankful for today's decision, but they say they're also very concerned for the victim's family, the Lubahusens. And in fact, Brad, I did try to contact the Lubahusens today, and um, I was not able to so far. However, in uh, 1993, when Shiro's case was before the Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court, I did talk to um, Laura Lubahusen's mother, Jane Lubahusen, who at that time said that she didn't know about the death penalty. She just did not want to see Thomas Shiro see the light of day. So. But he could see the light of day now because 30 years uh, of his sentence, he could be eligible for parole. It sounds very much like that. However, um, Shiro's attorneys admit themselves that uh, there is a question of mental stability here. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're not sure what will happen beyond that. But you're right, he would be up for parole conceivably after 30 years. We just saw Shiro on death row just a few months ago. What physically happens to him now? I assume he won't be staying on death row anymore. Well, at this point, he's probably going to stay where he is for at least a while. At this point, uh, the, you, the Indiana the Supreme Court has to remand this back to the Brown County judge, who is no longer the original judge that uh, sentenced uh, Shiro. It is a new one. Uh, she will take this up, and, but she does have to sentence him to the court's recommendation, which is the 60 years maximum. All right. Shelley Kirk, thanks a lot. Okay. Breaking news at this hour. In other news tonight, the man accused of shaking his baby to death has been found guilty of reckless homicide. The jury in the trial of John Alvey Sr. got the case today. On News 25's Eric Weisfeld is live from downtown Evansville with more on this. Eric? Brad, a teary-eyed John Alvey Sr. sat and listened as the jury unanimously convicted him of the reckless homicide charges for the death of three-and-a-half-month-old Mason Alvey. Now, the jury didn't know it, but John Alvey Sr. is considered a habitual offender, so once the jury convicted him, the state then charged him as a habitual offender, and Alvey did plead guilty to those charges. Those charges stem from three previous criminal battery convictions, all involving children. Parents of those children say the community can now rest a little easier that a maniac is off the streets. She said too many kids, and, and it led to death for Mason, and he has, right after Mason died in March, he turned around and got Susan pregnant again. They just delivered a baby in November, a nine-month-old child that was taken away from, from uh, Child protective, protective Services. So I worried for that child if it, if it was not guilty. Alvy could receive eight years behind bars for the reckless homicide charges. He also could get an additional 12 years for those habitual offender charges. He will be sentenced August 29th at 1 p.m. Now, coming up tonight on News 25 at 10 o'clock, we're going to speak to some of Little Mason's relatives. You'll also hear from the chief deputy prosecutor, find out how confident he is that Alvy will, in fact, get those full 20 years behind bars, Brad. Any reaction today from Mr. Alvy in court as this was handed down? Really no reaction other than the fact that he sat there with tears in his eyes. He did turn around once and wink at his now wife, who is the mother of Mason Alvy. All right. News 25's Eric Weisfeld, downtown. Thanks a lot, Eric. A delay in the first trial in connection with the murder of a bossy high school student, a Pike County, Indiana judge today, granted a defense motion to push the trial of Leon Jones back to October 21st. He had been scheduled to stand trial August 26th. A 22-year-old is charged with murder and rape in the death of 15-year-old Shannon Wenzel. Wenzel was beaten, raped, and stabbed before being run over several times by a truck last December. 
Prosecutors say they may decide by the end of the week whether to seek the death penalty against Jones and two other suspects in the case. Kelly Craig and James Bryan Powell also face trial this fall on charges of murder and Shannon Wenzel's death. Where is $18,000 that's missing from the Henderson County Jail tonight? An audit at the detention center reveals more than $11,500 of that money is missing from the cafeteria account and about $7,000 is missing from the work release account. Now, it is true that it's very difficult to project work release receipts because uh, depending upon your, how much you earn, uh, obviously the amount of money that is remitted will differ. But uh, that, that is what causes us to believe that there is more really at stake here than we have even been able to determine according to the records that we have available to us. No charges have been filed as of yet, but Hatchett says charges could be issued in the future. Lights out today for thousands of Henderson residents. A late morning power outage left 80% of Henderson and about 15,000 other customers in western Kentucky in the dark. Good morning, Municipal Power and Light. Well, phones obviously at the Henderson Municipal Power and Light offices rang almost nonstop when the outage occurred shortly after 11. Power blackout occurred when Big Rivers had an inadvertent overload of one of its federal, or rather, feeder lines which cut power to thousands of customers. Power was restored after about a half hour. Dangerous, but necessary. That's the best way to describe the work performed by the Evansville Police Bomb Squad, which has been seen more than its share of work in recent weeks. News 25's Mark Glover talked with one of the EPD's Bomb Squad members today and joins us now in the newsroom with more. Mark? Well, Brad, Evansville Police's Bomb Squad has seen more than its share of work in recent weeks. They were called out four times in just one day about two weeks ago. That included two bank robberies in which the suspect claimed to leave a bomb. Now, what's so surprising is that the Evansville Police Bomb Squad is made up of only two officers who volunteer their time to defuse potentially serious situations. I'm not going to say you're not, not afraid because anybody that's not afraid is crazy. I mean, <laughs> there's no other option there. But, but you try to think about what you're going to do. You're, you're, going, you're going through through your mind that you need to do this, you need to do that. You're really not thinking about, you know. The dangers. Right. Now, Officer Evans says he and his partner, Detective Andy Woods, have to train at least once a month and accumulate 40 hours of training each year to remain on the bomb squad. Now, Officer Evans believes his unit has been so busy lately, unfortunately, because of the recent Olympic bombing in Atlanta and apparent bombing of the TWA Flight 800 near, near New York, Brad. Well, on a personal note or a human touch on all of this, Mark, when they see things like what happened in Atlanta occur, does that change their way of thinking about the job that they have to do? In fact, no. Uh, they say every time that they're called to a scene, they uh, actually go in thinking the very worst and hope for the best uh, is uh, when they uh, come upon uh, a potential bomb. All right. Nerves of steel there. That's right. Thanks a lot. News right. 25's Mark Glover. Well, cooler air is blowing through the Civic Center these days. It's a new system that is much more efficient, saving money on electricity and water. But News 25's Bill Riles is asking the question tonight, is this art or, or what? Well, Bill joins us now from the Civic Center with details on this. Bill? Well, Brad, what you're seeing behind me is a functional piece of engineering. It's based on principles that are decades old. It's called a cooling tower, and most cooling towers for buildings, or uh, whether they're commercial or municipal buildings, are hidden because, let's face it, most of them are ugly and nasty, but not this one. The idea was born from the need to replace the 30-year-old air conditioning system here at the Civic Center. The solution from BZ Parrot and Shoulders engineer Tom Durkin replace the chillers using an environmentally friendly refrigerant and a cooling tower in place of the old fountain that uses water to transfer heat from the building water that's constantly recycled we're moving the heat out of the building putting it into the water and as that water cascades through the nozzles and the um, the fill inside the cooling tower there we're moving air past it and then uh, actually transferring the heat from inside the building into the air that's going up into the atmosphere in most buildings cooling towers are tucked out of sight but the need to locate it here dictated an aesthetically pleasing appearance 
it was a challenge. What you don't see very often, though, is you don't see engineers and uh, architects and owners who are willing to put the technical aspects of the building out on display in front of the world. This is almost like a, uh, a piece of sculpture that, you, that you've uh, hired someone, uh, an artist to design, yet you don't know what it's going to look like until it's completed. But the result is functional, efficient, and innovative, one of a kind. It'll save taxpayers a whopping 40% on electricity. And it seems to work. The building is cool. But is it art? To me, it makes architecture fun is the, the blending of technology, which is usually engineering aspects with art aspects. And so it's probably somewhere in between. Well, Brad, some fun facts for you. Inside that uh, cooling tower back there, it's raining uh, with the force of one inch per minute. That's a lot of rain. Also, it costs a million and a half dollars for this entire cooling renovation. The engineers say it'll more than pay for itself with the electrical savings within four years. Brad? All right, Bill. A lot of people have been asking, what in the world is that down there? Now we know. All right. Thanks a lot. News 25's Bill Riles. Well, coming up, a preview of this year's Volksfest when News 25 at 6 continues. You're watching News 25 at 6 with Brad Bird, meteorologist Wayne Hart, and first warning Doppler radar, and sports with Mark Ashola. This is News 25 at 6, where news comes first. Join News 25 Daybreak weekday mornings at 6 on News 25, where news comes first. Every Sunday, I go out to get to get nothing. It's time once again for those of you who love sauerkraut and that chicken dance to be a little bit German. The Germania Manor Corps Volksfest kicks off tomorrow with beer, brats, and hundreds of pounds of pig's knuckles. But there are some changes planned for this year's three-day bash. News 25's Kathy Pribble gives us a preview. Roll out the barrel, and this one, and this one. It wouldn't be the Volksfest without a hefty supply of brew. Nearly 15,000 people are expected to belly up to the beer wagons this week, and it's likely they won't be doing it on an empty stomach. How does some bratwurst sound? The official test batch was cooked up today. And what exactly are you looking for? This is the bratwurst. We're looking for consistency. We're looking for to make sure that the, there's not, enough, not too much grease, not too much water, and uh, the taste. But that's far from the only chow here. Bats of pig's knuckles and piles of potatoes await. When you work on the potatoes, it's not that fun because you have to put up with all that steam coming off of them. Does it make you not want to eat a potato for like a year? No. Organizers say the goal is to make this year's festival more visitor friendly, starting with a second entrance. You come in the front door and it's just like a bottleneck. Well, we decided uh, let's open up a Maryland Street entrance uh, at night from 8 to 11. That will take some of the congestion off the front. Parking has always been sort of a fend-for-yourself proposition at the Volksfest, but this year will be a little bit different. Casino Astar is allowing people to park in its lot on Riverside in Maine, and a shuttle bus will bring people over to the festival. And one experiment from last year will carry over. Kids are welcome to join the Jolly Germans during lunch from 11 to 2. Volksfest kicks off at lunch on Thursday. Kathy Pribble, News 25 in Evansville. Well, how's the weather going to shape up for the festival? Meteorologist Wayne Hart will be in next with your first warning Doppler forecast. Closed captioning for News 25 is provided by Rogers Jewelers and 25 WEHT. We can't wait any longer. The savings at Rogers' incredible birthday bash are as simple as one, two, three. Your first purchase on any gold and diamond jewelry is 50% off. Save 55% on your second purchase. Save an incredible 60% on your third purchase. So you see, the savings at Rogers really are as simple as one, two, three. 
Remember, Rogers has better quality, and nobody beats Rogers' prices. Nobody. Hello. I'd like my checking balance. Contact Department 40. Well, how about a deposit? Your account number? I'm Jane Doe. Your account number? In banking, personal computers usually aren't personal. At United Fidelity, we have personalized checking accounts from low minimums to those that earn interest. And they all come with our one check, checking and ATM card. And no check writing fees. Write all you want. Give us a call. We'll call you by your name, not a number. United Fidelity Bank. Member FDIC. Wayne Hart's forecast with first one. I don't need to tell you, it's just hot and sticky and miserable out there, but hopefully things will uh, cool down somewhat for the That's Volksfest right. this weekend. As promised, cooler weather is on the way, but in the meantime, we'll have to deal with a little bit of rain. In Evansville, those skies are just partly sunny, 85, but look at that dew point way up there at 74. The relative humidity on the high side at 70%, a south breeze, and the pressure is falling. Our high today, up to 90 degrees following an overnight low of 71. We're going to start off with live first warning Doppler radar. We're on the 40 mile range this evening because we just have two cells to show you here up to the northwest of Evansville in northwestern Posey County and then just across the river from New Harmony. Also a couple cells just east of Grayville, Illinois across western Posey County and these are moving very little so if you're up here and it's raining you're just going to have to wait for these cells to basically rain themselves out. And that was a story earlier this afternoon. Much of Kentucky got some heavy rains, and even the east side of Evansville had some very heavy rains with a little bit of flooding reported along Green River Road. Now, as we look a little further to our northwest on regional radar, you can see a line of more significant, strong to severe thunderstorms cutting across the Mississippi Valley. These will die out by the time they make them into the tri-state uh, later on tonight, so we don't have to worry about that tonight. But these are associated with a cold front that will be moving through the area tomorrow. So more scattered thunderstorms tomorrow, some of which could be strong. But the front should come through by late tomorrow afternoon. And then by Friday morning, it's pushing down to our south. And as promised all week long, relief is on the way with a cooler and less humid air mass settling in just in time for the weekend. My first warning forecast for this evening, any of those isolated thunder showers should be ending over the next couple of hours with partly cloudy skies, temperatures in the 80s. Then overnight, mainly clear, a little patchy fog, a low of 70 to 75. A mix of sun and clouds tomorrow with more scattered thunderstorms, very warm and humid, a high in the upper 80s. But those thunderstorms will end early tomorrow night with clearing skies, a low in the mid-60s. Then for Friday, mostly sunny, cooler and less humid, a high of 80 to 85. And that's pretty much a story right on through the weekend. Even on Monday, we get into the upper 80s, but the humidity won't be bad at all. So just one more day of the heat and humidity, and then great weather for the weekend. Okay, we will take a Wayne. Thanks a lot. Marcus Shola joins us now. A big summer for Kevin Hardy. That's right, and the Evansville product is coming to a football stadium near you. We'll have that story and more sports coming up. Meteorologist Gary Rizzo's first warning Doppler forecasts can be heard weekday mornings on 104.1 FM WIKY with Joe Blair. On the radio, count on the team of WIKY and News 25, where news and weather come first. Celebrate with fantastic deals of the top names in the electronics industry and pay no interest for 12 months during Risley's Big 38. Birthday blow. Save $100 on a Panasonic Super VHS Hi-Fi Stereo VCR, now just $399. Choose a Sony 8mm Handicam camcorder with 10 times variable speed zoom and digital noise reduction, only $499. Free carry bag and tape. Or save $200 on a Panasonic 31-inch stereo television with two tuner picture-in-picture, picture, just $799. Free local delivery. Pay no interest for 12 months during the Big 38. Birthday blow. All month long at Risley's. The new Works Burger from Hardee's now costs 99 cents. The Competition's Burger now also costs 99 cents. With ours, you get a great tasting quarter pound burger with lettuce, pickles, onions, tomatoes, and cheese. With theirs, you get the same ingredients and no cheese. Cheese? No cheese. On theirs, it's extra. So why cover it up? Well, without cheese, it looks a little naked. The Works Burger, only 99 cents and only at Hardee's. And for limited time, our made from scratch sausage and egg biscuit is also just 99 cents. Evansville, Boonville, and Henderson have a new way to save the Beeler's Buy Low Bonus Card. Sign up today. It's free. Your bonus card is not a credit card. It's a savings card. Use it each time you shop Beeler's Buy Low. Look for special pink bonus signs in every aisle that lead the way to savings. Simply present your card each time you check out. You'll save on over 2,000 items throughout the store. No more in-app coupons to clip. Just great savings every day. Because you deserve a Beeler's Bonus. It's a whole new way to save in Evansville, Boonville, and Henderson. The bonus card. When it comes to practicing the art of healing, you could say we have a history in Evansville, complete with interesting facts, 
important contributions and significant dates. Even recorded evidence of miracles. Deaconess devoted to your health since 1892. Hey, Vern, here it is. The Viper from Audubon Chrysler Center. Oh, sure, Audubon's got hundreds and hundreds of new and used cars to choose from, but this is the dream machine. The Viper, macho V10, 415 horses, power, speed, performance. The Viper from Audubon Chrysler Center. It may not have wings, Vern, but it sure can fly. <laughs> For 12 years, Tony and Teresa Torres have had their life insurance with American Family. When the children were born, we knew we needed to add more life insurance. The Torres family also has American Family auto and homeowner's insurance. We just feel secure with American Family. Loyalty. The mark of satisfied customers. American Family Insurance. Look in the white or yellow pages for the American Family agent nearest you. Well, so far, everything's great for Evansville's Kevin Hardy. After being selected second overall by the Jacksonville Jaguars, the rookie linebacker looks mighty impressive heading into Friday's preseason game in St. Louis. This past Friday night, Hardy's coming out party versus the Giants was certainly good enough to turn heads. He tied for team high with four tackles. Hardy also had two assists and one fumble recovery. Up next, that close-to-home game in St. Louis, complete with lots of friends and Mr. and Mrs. Hardy. Yeah, well, my parents, they came down uh, this last week, and uh, one of, well, it seems like one of my parents is in their stands, I play better, because they played, they came to a lot of my games in Illinois, and it's just something playing in front of them uh, helps me out, because I, I know they're there to watch me, and they want me to do well, and so I want to do well for them. Hardy says there's so many of his buddies heading to St. Louis, he's going to have to pay for tickets himself. He's plumb out of comps. Wrigley Field today, Mets and the Cubbies, great day for a ball game, top of the sixth, Chris Jones goes right up Broadway. Bernard Gilkey scores, but the Cubbies lead 6-3. Then Brent Main with a double to the left field corner. Two more runs come in for the Mets, who keep it coming and win it by a final of 11-7. Ellis Park today, the early double. 9-4 pays you $124.20. Kevin Hardy looking mighty impressive, and hopefully he can keep it up heading into the regular season. Well, what a life. Come on over and see me play football. Yeah, that's it. Come on. We'll, we'll have we got a whole section for you. All right. Thanks a lot, Mark. Okay. We'll be right back. You're watching News 25 at 6. Today's Indiana Supreme Court decision that overturns the death sentence for convicted killer Thomas Shiro of Evansville. Wayne, if you're heading out tonight, how's it looking? Well, a few scattered showers and thunder showers continue to the northwest of Evansville, running from western Gibson County uh, through the New Harmony area back into extreme southern Illinois. That's the five-day outlook, and as you can see, more thunderstorms tomorrow, then cooler and less humid weather for the weekend. Well, hopefully a good weekend. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. For Marcus Shola and Wayne Hart, I'm Brad Bird. Have a nice evening. We'll see you at 10.